leaders. Duly noted. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, happy Earth Week. I rise to today along with a couple of my colleagues, one from West Virginia, and uh, another, I don't see our other colleague out here, but one from Arkansas, to uh, speak on uh, Recycling Infrastructure and Accessibility Act of uh, 2023, uh, and the Recycling and Composting Accountability Act, bipartisan legislation that would improve our nation's recycling and composting systems. As a uh, number of uh, our colleagues know, my wife and I are both uh, avid recyclers and composters, and have been for some time. Uh, I long believed uh, in environmental uh, stewardship. That's the way my parents raised uh, my sister and me, and I suspect that's the way a lot of parents, uh, members of this body, raised uh, their sons and daughters. They raised us to leave behind a cleaner, healthier planet for future generations, and that's a belief I know is shared by, not just by elected officials here in Washington, but by many people across this country. I'm also a strong believer that bipartisan solutions are lasting solutions. Whenever possible, we, we ought to work to find common ground and put forward bipartisan solutions that can stand the test of time. And to that uh, end, I'm pleased to have found uh, great partners, not good, just good partners, but great partners, in uh, developing uh, these bipartisan recycling bills. Senator Capito, our ranking member on the Environment and Public Works Committee, with whom I am privileged to, uh, to serve and, and to chair, along with uh, Senator John Bozeman, our fellow uh, co-chair of the Senate Recycling uh, Caucus, a colleague from Arkansas. All three of us recognize that we have to do our part to continue to improve our nation's recycling and composting efforts. And doing so not only benefits our environment, but also creates economic opportunity and jobs, uh, a lot of jobs. The legislation we're here to discuss today would address several of the challenges that America's recycling efforts currently face and what we might do about them. One of these uh, challenges is the availability of good data. In November of 2021, with input, input from many stakeholders, the Environmental Protection Agency released its first ever national recycling strategy. When that strategy was released, I was delighted to learn that many of the comments I'd submitted to EPA on behalf of our committee had been incorporated into the final version. It was a happy day when we learned that. This document uh, offered a transformative vision for strengthening our nation's waste management efforts, but also highlighted the need for greater standardization around data collection. To address this challenge around data collection, Senator Bozeman and I, along with our staffs, developed the Recycling and Composting Accountability Act. Our bill would improve EPA's ability to gather data on a nation's recycling systems and explore opportunities for implementing a national composting strategy. EPA has also set a, word, set a goal of, of increasing the U.S. Uh, recycling rate to 50 percent by 2030, with a current recycling rate of only 32 percent. It's clear we have a long ways to go. That's why we uh, must also focus on increasing recycling, access to recycling opportunities uh, throughout our nation, not just in rural areas, in, in, in uh, urban areas or suburban areas, but rural areas as well. Many uh, Americans uh, in disadvantaged communities want to recycle. They want to compost too, but they're unable to do so because they, in many cases, live in neighborhoods that lack curbside uh, pickup, uh, they lack bottle return, and they lack other necessary recycling infrastructure. Senator Capito's Recycling Infrastructure and Accessibility Act of 2023 would address this challenge by creating a pilot program at EPA to help expand recycling services in underserved areas. The Recycling Infrastructure and Accessibility Act that she has written would bring many communities, including those in rural areas, into the recycling world while also better protecting our environment. I commend Senator Capito for her work and her leadership in developing this legislation. I also want to continue working with her to ensure that her bill helps to jumpstart recycling in communities with the greatest need, and especially disadvantaged and historically underserved communities. Both of the bills that I've returned, uh, referred to uh, from uh, members of our committee, uh, both of these bills are the result of a true collaboration and reflect a substantial amount of bipartisan effort dedicated to exploring and addressing our nation's recycling and composting challenges. 
Our introduction to these bills this week is fitting and it is timely. This Saturday marks the 53rd anniversary of the very first uh, Earth Day. This day is uh, personal to me and some, Mr. P Mr. President, um, 53 years ago, this, uh, this Saturday, um, I stood uh, side by side with tens of thousands of people in San Francisco's Golden Gate uh, Park. I was uh, a, a naval flight officer completing my training about to deploy from our base in Moffett Field, California to head for Southeast Asia, but had an opportunity to join tens of thousands of people in Golden Gate Park that day to celebrate our country's first ever Earth Day. That same year, Democrats and Republicans worked together with then President Richard Nixon to create a federal agency dedicated to protecting our environment. The name of that agency, the Environmental Protection Agency. Decades later, I can still vividly remember, I can, I can close my eyes and remember it now, that first Earth Day and the urgency we felt to uh, save our planet. Today, a younger generation also shares that sense of urgency. And while I believe that we ought to live, uh, live every day like it's Earth Day, on April 22nd, uh, 22nd uh, each year, I especially welcome the opportunity to reflect and give thanks for all the incredible natural resources and natural beauty that God has given us on this planet of ours. Earth Day is also a time for all of us to reflect on our actions individually uh, and as a whole. Think about what more we can do and should be doing to protect our planet uh, and its inhabitants. Like many uh, people, I try to live my life by the golden rule, always treating other people the way I want to be treated. And I also believe that principle extends to the way we treat and care for our planet and those with whom we share it. A couple of years ago, some of my colleagues may remember, we had a visit down the other of the Capitol in the House chamber, a fellow from France, his name Macron, the uh, Prime Minister of France. He came to, uh, to address a joint uh, session of Congress that day and uh, did a great job, was well, very well received from, from, I think, from everybody. But that day he spoke of the importance of protecting our environment from the threats of climate change, hazardous waste and, and uh, toxic pollution as, as well. At the end of his speech, he said something uh, that I'll, I'll never forget. Here's what he said. He said, uh, he's talking about our planet, and he, he said these, this, these words, he said, there's no planet B. There's no planet B. So this is the only one we're going to have. And I sat there that day thinking, boy, he's got it right. There is no planet B. That means that we only have one chance to get it right when it comes to protecting and caring for this planet of ours. As I said earlier, I'm committed to leaving behind a cleaner, healthier planet for future generations, and I welcome all of our colleagues to join uh, Senator Capito and, and myself uh, and, uh, in, that, uh, in that effort. Fortunately, we have made remarkable progress over the past five decades following that very first Earth Day, from enacting comprehensive laws to protect our environment and support good-paying, clean energy jobs, to ratify the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol and phasing down the use of super-polluting chemicals like HFCs, which are a thousand times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. There is much to be proud of. Still, our work is uh, not uh, finished. There's got a long ways to go. As Robert Frost, I remember Robert Frost used to say, miles to go before we sleep. Miles to go before we sleep. So today, we uh, celebrate the opportunity to build on this progress to live behind a livable uh, planet uh, with our bi uh, bipartisan recycling legislation. We also acknowledge that there's more to be done. And in the spender, uh, spirit of Earth Day, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and keep marching forward in my efforts to do the right thing by our planet and the people that uh, call it home, just as I did some 53 years ago this Saturday. And uh, I invite uh, Americans from all walks of life uh, to join uh, our senators from West Virginia, Senator Capito, Senator Bozeman from Arkansas, and myself uh, in this, uh, in this uh, effort. Uh, it's uh, the right thing to do, and it will make you feel good all over, I promise. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.